Hello everyone, I am Nitij and today we will implement an undo redo functionality using custom hooks and keyboard shortcuts in a React project. So for this topic, we will cover how to manage state history, how to bind keyboard shortcuts for seamless user interactions and also how to integrate these concepts into a custom React hook. So before we continue with our code walkthrough, let me first show you the demo. The first thing that our hook is going to do is to overwrite the existing browser's default undo redo functionality. Secondly, it provides undo redo per character of text that we will enter in the text inputs. So let's first enter some text in the first input. Now when I will press Ctrl Z, then you can see that the text is being removed character by character and then when I will press Ctrl Y then you can see that it is being now added to the input character by character. Let's try this for another text input. So this is another random text. When we are pressing Ctrl Z then the characters are being removed from input 2 and when I am pressing Ctrl Y then the characters are being added or being undoed into the second input. Now let's find out how we can implement this hook in our React project. So this is Visual Studio Code with a default boilerplate React.js application created using create react app command. The first thing that I will do is to create a new folder in the src folder with the name hooks and then I will create a new folder in hooks with the name use undo redo and now let's create the index.js file for the undo redo hook so index.js now I will add the function for our hook. We will also need to import some dependencies like use state and use effect. So let's do that. Import use state and use effect. Now in this function, the first thing that we will need is to add a bunch of state variable that we are going to need. So the first one that we will need is the history state variable to maintain the undo and redo history on every user interaction with the input second one is going to be a pointer using which we will know what is the current value from the history now i will add the two state variables for history and current index so history and set history to set the history and current index and set current index to set the current index the default value for history is an arrow with a single value which is initial value and the default value for current index is zero which simply means that right now the pointer is pointing towards the initial value. So the text input which is going to be driven by this undo redo hook is going to show its value as the history array's value at index 0. And you will see how this indexing is going to work in a moment. Next we are going to need three functions for this hook. The first one is to set the value. The second one is to undo from the text input and the third one is to redo the last action in the text input. So for setting the value, I will first add a new arrow function. This is the set function, which is going to accept the argument of the value, which is going to be set into the history as current value. Now to set a new value into our current history array, first we need to take out the valid items from our current history. And that can be done by simply fetching the range from the first index to the current index. And that can be done by using array.slice on our history array. So new history is history.slice, the zeroth index or the first item and current index plus one is added to include the item which is at the current index as well. Otherwise, current index history item will not be a part of this new history. Next, we will simply push this value into the new history array. And because we have a new array, we cannot no longer continue to use the current value of the current index. So we have to set the new index value as the last item of this new history. So which simply means to set the current index as new history dot length minus one, which is the last value. Now let's add the function for undoing from the selected input. Now to perform undo and redo, we simply have to move our pointer current index either in the forward direction or in the backward direction. Now to do undo, we will move it in the backward direction. So to do that, we will simply set a new value for current index by calling set 
current index and in this set state function we will simply use the previous value of current index which is this one and what we will do is we will simply set the new value as current index minus one but we're in the risk of setting the value of current index less than zero so we have to place a range limit over here using math dot max so the max value that can be set into current index can be either current index minus one or zero similarly for redo what we can do is we can do current index plus one and we have to rename this function as well and instead of math.max we will be using math.min and instead of zero we will be using history.length minus one and then finally we can return from this hook the history at current index the functions set undo and redo so let's just do that so the history at current index and the set undo and redo functions now in any web application the user is not going to click buttons to undo and redo they are simply going to use the shortcut keys and let's apply the shortcut keys logic to our undo redo hook so to do that what we will do is we will use a ref so let's use an input ref with a default value of null and we will also need the use ref now you must be thinking how are we going to use the input ref so what we will do is we will expose the input ref as a return value from this hook so input ref and we will use use effect to handle the event bindings so use effect and for the callback function first we have to implement the handle key down function so what will happen is we are going to associate this handle key down function with the windows key down event so window dot add event listener and the event is going to be hold on can't see anything the event is going to be key down and the function is going to be handle key down which will be associated with this event so with handle key down we simply have to handle two events control plus z and control plus y now to check for these shortcuts first we will check if the input ref is a valid element and it is currently active in the document next we are going to check for the control key and z so if both event dot control key and event dot key which is pressed is z which means control and z are pressed then it means that this is for undo operation so we will simply call undo but hold on we will have to do one more thing which is to prevent the existing or the default browsers behavior from happening because that is going to mess up with our code logic to undo and redo characters one by one so we have to call event dot prevent default similarly for redo what we can do is we can simply call else if and then if the control key and if the y key are pressed then this means that this is for redo now instead of calling event dot prevent default multiple times i am just going to call it from here we also need to perform the cleanup when this hook unloads for any input so we have to return a cleanup function so return and instead of add event listener we are just going to call remove event listener for the key down event and for the dependency array we need to use the redo and redo and the undo functions so you must be thinking why are we listening to the changes for these functions it simply means that if we will not do that then both of these functions undo and redo will be pointing towards the stale state of the history array and that is going to give us incorrect undo and redo characters there is one last feature that we can implement for our hook which is to set the limit for the undo and redo this should be done to prevent the abuse of memory within the browser because we cannot have unlimited undos and redos for all the form inputs now to apply the limit we just need to check if after applying the new value to the current history if the new history's length is going to exceed the limit if that's the case then we just need to pick up the items which are by simply an if condition to check the length 
so this is how we can do that first we can compare the length and then we can simply use array.slice to pick up only the new history items which are up to the limit value so finally let's just export our hook from this file so that we can import it into a custom component so now i will create another folder in the src folder with the name components and let's create a new component folder so my component with a default index.jsx file and i am just going to use a shortcut to generate the boilerplate let's just set the name of the component first we need to import the hook so import undo redo there's a typo in the file name let's just fix that and i am now going to import it again okay the path has automatically been updated the first thing that i will do is to call use undo redo hook and fetch all the values needed for a single input now for the return value i will first return a parent div with some basic styling next i am going to add an input which is going to use these values returned from this use undo redo hook so as you can see over here for this input the value is the value and on change we are calling set value providing the new value there are buttons to undo and redo and we are using this input ref to connect this input to the event handling of control z and control y now let's save this code and see how it is looking in the browser so this is our input and now let's test our logic so when i'm trying to enter anything into this input then nothing is appearing let's check what is wrong with our code so everything seems fine over here let's check our hook with our hook the set function also seems fine we are simply pushing the new value let's just scroll down i think the issue is with this event.prevent default we cannot have it in a single place for only the input ref check we have to place it for both of these conditions to prevent the default behavior for control z and control y otherwise it is going to prevent the default behavior for all the key entries so let's save it and now let's test our code now we are able to enter the text over here so let's check it um, testing testing let's press undo now let's press redo the buttons are working the shortcuts also seem to be working when i am pressing ctrl z and ctrl y now in our code let's add another input to see if we can use the same undo redo hook in a single form for multiple inputs now to do that i will simply add another hook execution code statement so i have renamed the return values with value 1 set value 1 value 2 set value 2 and so on to use with two inputs let's also add the second input and make both of these inputs use the new values as well so this is input 1 and this is input 2 now let's test if both of them are going to have different texts but have individual undo and redo functionalities let's add something here testing 1 2 3 now over here i'm going to add testing 4 5 6 press ctrl z for the second one ctrl y for the first one press ctrl z ctrl y so it seems that our hook is working flawlessly for both of these inputs so the ability to undo and redo individual actions is a significant enhancement to the user experience in any application by understanding these concepts and learning how to implement them in react you can add a professional touch to your projects now based on the same logic you can extend this undo and redo functionality instead of characters to other actions by simply maintaining a history of state variable changes finally if you found this tutorial helpful then please consider subscribing to this channel your support motivates me to create more content like this i am nitej and i will see you in the next tutorial happy coding